Hey everyone, and welcome to Adisla. If you're into astrophotography or even just starting to explore the night sky, you've probably already realized how important it is to have something that ties your entire setup together. Something that can control your camera, your mount, your filters, your guiding, everything. That's exactly where astrophotography controllers come in. And in today's video, we're diving into what we believe is the ultimate comparison guide. We'll walk you through the top contenders in this space. ASI Air, Nina, Stellar May, Astroberry, Voyager, Eagle, and also give you a peek into Stella Vita, a new entrant. Whether you're someone looking for a simple plug and play experience, or you want complete control with insane levels of customization, there's something in this video for you. Let's start with the basics. What even is an astrophotography controller? Think of it as the brain of your imaging rig. It's what connects and synchronizes everything. Your mount, camera, focuser, filter wheel, auto guider, all the pieces that make up your imaging system. The controller handles the automation behind the scenes, so you don't have to manually manage every single part. When everything is talking to each other smoothly, it saves you time, prevents errors, and most importantly, lets you focus on capturing the best images possible. A good controller can make the difference between a frustrating night and a night where everything just works. Now, let's talk about the big names in the controller game. First up, we've got ASI Air, ZWO's extremely popular all-in-one box that's earned its place as a favorite among beginners. Then we have Nina, an open-source, Windows-based software powerhouse used by many advanced imagers for its sheer level of control. StellarMay and Astroberry come next. Both run on Raspberry Pi and are great open-source alternatives, especially if you're into tinkering or prefer Linux-based systems. Voyager is for those who demand full automation. Think observatory-class setups where reliability is non-negotiable. And then there's Eagle, a premium all-in-one mini PC built specifically for astrophotography. Finally, there's Stella Vita, still under active development, designed to blend the plug-and-play simplicity of ASI Air with the broad gear compatibility like Nina, all without locking you into a specific brand. Now, when we talk about gear compatibility, this is where the landscape starts to split. ASI Air works beautifully, if and only if you're using ZWO cameras and accessories. Everything connects instantly, it's stable, and the app is clean. But try plugging in something else, a DSLR, a Player One camera, or a QHY filter wheel, and you'll quickly hit a wall. On the other hand, Nina supports virtually every piece of hardware out there, thanks to the ASCOM platform. Cameras, mounts, focusers from any brand, it's all fair game. StellarMate and Astroberry take a similar approach, but use the Indie platform instead, which is open source and Linux based. They're also quite flexible, but sometimes require more manual configuration. Voyager and Eagle, being Windows based, also work with a huge variety of gear. And Stella Vita is being built with this exact kind of flexibility in mind to support anything that works with ASCOM or Indie, so you're never stuck using only certain brands. At Edisla, we wish them all the best on their journey to success. In terms of ease of use, ASI Air is honestly in a league of its own, for beginners. The mobile app is clean, responsive, and does a great job guiding you through setup. You don't even need a laptop. For someone who's new to the hobby or just doesn't want to deal with complexity, it's an easy win. Nina, by contrast, has a learning curve. It's not the kind of software you open and instantly know how to use, but once you figure it out, it's incredibly powerful. StellarMate and Astroberry are a bit more technical, especially if you're not used to Linux, but they've gotten more user-friendly over time. Voyager is definitely for advanced users. The interface is powerful, but very utility-driven. Eagle feels familiar if you're comfortable with Windows. But again, it's not as handholdy as ASI Air. Stella Vita aims to offer the same level of ease and polish that people love about ASI Air, but with none of the compatibility walls. Now let's get into automation, the real magic of these controllers. ASI Air covers the basics really well. Sequencing, autofocus, if you're using their focuser, plate solving, guiding, it's all there. For most users, especially in the early stages, that's more than enough. Nina, though, takes automation to another level. You can build complex imaging sequences, conditionals, and integrate plugins for weather safety, smart focusing, meridian flips. It's a dream for deep sky imagers who want everything dialed in. Voyager is even more hardcore. 
It's built for running remote observatories where everything has to be 100% reliable and recoverable, even if you're asleep or thousands of kilometers away. StellarMate and AstroBerry offer decent automation through KSTARS and ECOS, though the experience can vary depending on your setup. Eagle lets you run any Windows automation suite, so it's as powerful as what you install. Stella Vita, while focusing heavily on compatibility, already offers decent automation features, but it's not quite at the level of ASI Air just yet. Since it's designed to work with a wide range of brands, achieving the same level of seamless performance takes time. Portability is another factor worth considering. ASI Air nails it. It's compact, light, powered by a single 12V source, no need for a separate computer. It's made for grab-and-go astrophotography. StellarMate and AstroBerry running on Raspberry Pi are also lightweight and power efficient. Perfect for field use, though the Pi does require some protection from dew and the elements. Nina and Voyager, when run on a traditional laptop, aren't the most portable options, especially for field setups. But that changes quickly when you switch to a mini PC. With technology evolving at a rapid pace, we're seeing increasingly compact and powerful mini PCs hitting the market. These devices are making it easier than ever to run full-fledged astrophotography setups in the field without the bulk, bringing the portability of PC-based controllers much closer to their all-in-one counterparts. Eagle is portable but heavy and expensive, built like a tank but maybe overkill if you're just going to your local dark site. Community support matters more than you might think, especially when things go wrong, which they inevitably do. Nina has long been the powerhouse in this space, and for good reason. Its open source nature and robust plugin system have fueled rapid growth and innovation. The community around it is thriving. With an active Discord server, a buzzing GitHub, and a treasure trove of community-built tools and extensions. It's not just a controller, it's an ecosystem shaped by some of the most passionate imagers out there. ASI Air also has a massive community. You'll find forums, Facebook groups, Reddit threads, YouTube tutorials, it's all out there. StellarMate and AstroBerry have smaller but supportive user bases. Voyager's user base is more specialized, but it's incredibly passionate. Eagle, being a commercial product, offers excellent direct support. But again, that's baked into the premium price. Right now, Stella Vita doesn't yet have a large user base or extensive resources available. It's still in its early stages. And finally, there's the value question. Nina is completely free. You just need a Windows PC or mini PC to run it, and you're good to go. ASI Air and Stella Vita typically costs around $200 to $300, including the hardware. StellarMate software and hardware bundle comes in at about $300. AstroBerry is also free, but you'll need to invest in a Raspberry Pi and a few accessories to make it fully functional. Voyager requires a paid license, roughly $100 to $130 depending on the version. And Eagle, well, it's a premium solution. The full setup can easily range from $1,000 to $4,000. So what's the right choice for you? If you're serious about astrophotography and you want to use the best tools out there without being tied down to an ecosystem, then Nina is hard to beat. It gives you full control, works with almost any gear, and evolves fast thanks to a passionate community. Whether you're just starting out, already have some experience, or you're ready to take things to the next level and climb that learning curve, Nina remains our top pick. It gives you full control, unmatched flexibility, and the kind of depth you grow into the more you use it. If you're just starting out and don't have the time or patience to learn a complex software and you're using ZWO gear, then ASI Air is hands down the easiest way to get up and running. It's simple, intuitive, and everything just works out of the box. No drivers, no tinkering, just plug in and start imaging. If you're into open source, want to learn the technical side, and enjoy building your own setup, AstroBerry or StellarMate are fantastic. For those running observatories or chasing 100% automation, Voyager or Eagle are where you want to be. The timing truly couldn't be better for something like Stella Vita to make its mark. While ASI Air has done a great job simplifying astrophotography for beginners, many users are now starting to feel boxed in by its closed ecosystem. It only works with ZWO gear, which means if you want to use a different brand's camera, focuser, or filter wheel, you're out of luck. As people go deeper into the hobby and start upgrading their gear, ASI Air begins to feel too limiting, both in terms of hardware compatibility and overall control. 
It lacks advanced features like scripting, plugin support, and flexible automation, all of which power users increasingly want. This has created a real gap in the market where there's strong demand for a truly open, brand agnostic alternative that can grow with the user. That's where platforms like Stella Vita come in. Built on open standards like Indi, Stella Vita aims to combine the plug and play simplicity of ASI Air with the deep flexibility of platforms like Nina and Voyager without locking users into one brand. It's still early days, but the direction is clear. The astrophotography community is evolving fast, and users want more control, more compatibility, and more innovation. With advancements in edge computing, AI integration, and increasingly powerful mini PCs, the future belongs to open platforms that can adapt and expand. Whether it's Stella Vita or something similar from another brand, the shift away from closed ecosystems has already begun, and the community is ready for what comes next. So, will ASI Air ever open up its ecosystem to third-party gear and compete with platforms like Stella Vita? No, ZWO doesn't seem to be loosening its grip on the ecosystem. Quite the opposite, actually. They're doubling down with a clear shift towards smart telescopes and products like the 585 MC Air smart camera, all designed to work seamlessly within their own tightly integrated system. These new releases are even more restrictive, limiting flexibility when it comes to mixing in third-party gear or customizing setups. But that isn't necessarily a wrong move. Strategically, it makes a lot of sense. It drastically lowers the barrier for entry. For beginners, or those who just want something that works, the convenience of a plug-and-play system with zero setup headaches is incredibly appealing. Only time will tell whether closed ecosystems will continue to lead or if open platforms will rise to meet the demand for more flexibility. But one thing's certain, we're in a golden age of astrophotography. The night sky has never been more accessible, whether you're just getting started or you're a seasoned imager. Let's hope the spirit of innovation, community, and clear skies stays strong for years to come. Thanks for watching. At Edisla, right here in India, we're building entry-level telescopes and retailing some of the best astrophotography gear, all at great prices and backed by real, dependable support. We don't just hear customer feedback, we build around it. If this guide helped, hit that like button, subscribe, and drop a comment. Tell us, which controller are you using or planning to switch to? See you in the next one. Clear skies and happy imaging.